In this video we will be exploring dangling pose and caterpillar pose in yin yoga. Both of these poses offer a deep stretch to the myofascial backline of the body which corresponds with the urinary bladder meridian in Chinese medicine and belongs to the water element. So let's take a look first of all at dangling. So both of these stretches are going to offer a deep stretch right the way along the back of the legs and all the way up over the spine and up over the head. Um, restrictions in the hamstrings, restrictions in the lower back could all be contributing factors to how you can approach this pose. So with dangling, it's a standing forward fold. I would suggest that you start this practice with some blocks to hand and pop them somewhere down in front of you. Taking your legs kind of about inner hip width apart so that they're in a comfortable position, whether your feet turn in slightly or out slightly will depend on what feels comfortable in the orientation of your hip sockets. But with your feet more or less facing ahead, then we begin to come forward through flexion at the hips. Now, the first thing we want to notice is that, that we want this movement to come, as I said, from this flexion at the hips, not through a rounding forward of the upper back. So this is kind of just taking the stretch into this area of the upper back. And I'm not really managing to access this deeper stretch along the rest of that back line there. So by taking as much of a bend into your knees as you need to, this is going to keep, help you keep a little bit of a more extended spine as you come forward and take that more even stretch throughout the whole of the back body. Now, you may just be here today and already you may be feeling enough of a stretch in the backs of your legs and across your lower back in particular. However, if you can allow that head to drop down and come a little bit deeper, then by all means do. But it's very important that we allow time to do the work for us in these longer held poses. So come to your first, your first place where you're, whereby you feel that sort of 60, 70% stimulation of your capacity, but we're not forcing ourselves any deeper. We allow that to happen with our awareness, with our breath and with our time in the pose. Now, another way you can approach the pose is you can bend your knees even more if you want to and come to lean on the tops of your thighs there. And this can help give you a little bit of support. If you like, then you may be a little bit deeper and you may be able to kind of bring your head to a support. Now try to make sure that your weight isn't tipped back onto your heels there and that you take the weight kind of as even as you can between your heels and your toes. Okay, the hands can be touching the floor. They can even be resting kind of onto your ankles, but keep the tension out of your shoulders. Now, maybe you feel happy working without blocks. And in which case you can just allow your head to come all the way to the ground. Hands can either be on props or on the floor. You can hold onto your opposite elbows and this can really help deepen that stretch along the sides of the spine. And in cases of those people who are a lot more open in the back line, then you may even be able to bring your hands behind your knees or behind your, behind your legs somewhere. But again, we're not pulling ourselves in a yang-like yang way. We're not forcing ourselves into it. If this serves the pose for you to access the level of stretch that you require, then, then of course take your hands behind, but by no means is that a place that we're striving for, that we're aiming to get for, to. There's, there's no end place. And 
as you spend your time in the pose, you may want to begin to very slightly straighten up through the backs of the, the legs, but we don't want to lock the knees out. So keep that little smile in the backs of your knees, that little softness in the backs of your knees. And allow the weight of gravity to, to sort of coerce you down towards the earth. It's going to be a very grounding pose. It can also work with the energy of the earth, of the earth element, by feeling this sort of supportive, holding energy of, of the earth beneath you as you kind of surrender your weight down to it. And if you wanted to come back up through standing, then I would come up in stages very, very slowly rounding through the spine as you come up, keeping your chin tucked and very slowly bringing your head back up on top of your spine and you may feel a little bit dizzy from being upside down so give yourself a moment but th the most normal thing in your practice is that most poses are on the floor in yin yoga so in the majority of cases, it might be a good idea to bend your knees as much as you need to after your three, four, five minute hold, whatever you've decided to go for. Take yourself into a tabletop position and then take your sit bones back onto your heels and come into a child's pose, maybe making a cushion out of your hands or using one of the blocks if you had it there. And give yourself a few moments there and then you can either come into a rebound, maybe sliding forward onto your belly to rebound, or slowly rolling up through the spine, just as with standing, coming into seiza or cross-legged seated position. And then taking some form of seated rebound here to allow the pose to integrate and the blood flow to return to its normal direction. Now, caterpillar pose offers the same stretch. So we're stretching the back body and applying a little bit of compression to the, the stomach and spleen meridians on the front of the body through this folding forward action. So it can sometimes be a little bit more of an intense back body stretch for people who are particularly tight in their back line. If, when seated, you find it difficult to get your frontal hip points forward, so you're rounding backwards there, and you can't get to this position to even begin to move forward, then I would suggest that you take yourself onto some kind of prop to help with the anterior tilt of your pelvis. And that may be a block, a bolster, a cushion, or just a little rolled up blanket. Now, just as when we were standing, you may want your feet turned a little bit out, a little bit in. And this can change how you feel the stretch when you're going forward. And again, it, it really depends on two things. So the orientation of your hip sockets and also the depth of your, your hip sockets. So the femur, the thigh bone, it's a ball and socket joint here, so you have the, the top of the thigh bone has a ball on it that goes into the hip socket, and depending how deep they are and which way they're orientated will depend how that thigh bone moves within that space. So find what, what works for you as you begin to come forward. Now, if you want to activate the pose a little bit more into your hamstrings, those who are comfortably on your feet, then please do so. If not, you can take a belt, if you're somewhere higher up, and just be somewhere like this, so lightly encouraging the toes back towards you. But again, we're trying to keep it yin-like, so we're keeping an element of, of gentleness, of compassion there. We're not pulling ourselves forward, we're simply using this as a, a means to uh, allow ourselves to, to relax forward little by little. Give this time, uh, give this pose time. It's, 
it doesn't happen quickly for many people but you will often find as the minutes go on within the pose that you you will be surprised where you start and where you finished when you bring your mind to it so a little bit more hamstring orientated might be something like this or if you want to move that stretch a little bit more across your lower back even all the way up to your mid back then maybe a bit more of a rounding through the pose might feel more suitable for you today and and again as always maybe we have some kind of bolster here in the middle that we're lying down on or over our legs or if we're using our blocks we can sort of start by propping our elbows then we can begin to come a little bit further forward so making sure the back of the neck stays nice and long we don't want to be sort of shortening that back of the neck there and again after a few conscious breaths maybe 10 or so you might feel that the the edge this point of stimulation shifted and you're not feeling the edge so much as before so we can maybe remove a block and come down and every time we feel that edge shifting which it may or may not happen for you if you just need to be in this one position the whole time know that that is fine too and then eventually we start working our way lower down if your body allows you to and in some bodies it's never going to allow you to get this deep this low and that may be through kind of restrictions in the front of the groin whereby your bone structure as i was saying is just it's kind of clunking it's not allowing you to go any further so this difference between tension and compression is really important to bring into our awareness do you feel like you could go further but it feels like there's just something stopping you in the front of the groin well possibly you've reach the end range of motion in the front of your hip sockets then however if you feel like it's something stopping you more in the back body in the hamstrings across the buttocks across the lower back then this is potentially tensile restrictions in the soft tissues that we can work through with time and with patience and then when you have done your whole time then bring your hands tiptoeing either side to slowly take you back. You can release the hips and the lower back, leaning back for a moment for a breath or two, and then come all the way down for a full rebound on your back for a minute or two. So that is caterpillar pose and dangling pose, two ways to approach the same stretch. I hope you found that useful. Thank you for watching. Namaste.